through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Jump it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 240. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of March 26th. Woo! It's a good one. You know, again, once again, you know, a lot of uh, stuff from the end of last year, mm -hmm. a lot of noteworthy stuff, yep. some critically acclaimed stuff as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I'm going to start with a, a film that was nominated for... I forget, 10, 12 Academy Awards. Some ridiculous amount. Lincoln. Yes. Steven Spielberg's take on Abraham Lincoln, starring Daniel Day-Lewis. Mm -hmm. You might have heard of it. You it did all right. possibly heard of it. Pretty good flick, I will say. Interestingly enough, uh, you know, Daniel Day-Lewis won Best Actor. Yes. By doing so, he became the first actor or actress to win an acting Oscar of any kind in a movie directed by Steven Spielberg. That's Isn't surprising. that sad to yeah. realize? It's surprising until you really think about it and realize that most of Spielberg's pictures are not driven by a one or two character acting regiment, with the exception of maybe Schindler's List. Mm -hmm. They're usually, you know, you could probably negotiate pri Saving Private Ryan with Tom Hanks, but sure. a lot of it is usually like special effects or best picture or best director or sound, things like that. Not one actor carrying it so through. That's the true. Way. That's a good point. Interesting. So, way to go, DL. <coughs> Well, DDL is a beast in and of himself. <laughs> no, he is. So. Not really. Two backs. Yeah. Wow. That's a, that's a picture. Um, <laughs> so it comes in a four-disc Blu-ray DVD digital copy yes. set. Um, in terms of special features, I don't know. I guess it's okay. It's not really what I would necessarily want. There's Journey to Lincoln. Steven mm -hmm. Spielberg and his collaborators discuss the challenges and excitement of bringing the story uh, of the president to the screen. Mm-hmm. In the company of the character, delve into Daniel Day Lewis's portrayal of Lincoln. Very nice. Discover the authenticity and openness and created by the actors and filmmakers on set. Mm -hmm. Which they did a ton of work. <clears throat> like yeah. The watch that Lincoln uses, the sounds for that, they went and recorded the actual watch that he owned at the time in a museum. They recorded the sound of that watch and used it in the film. Uh, I mean, it's also, you know, Dan, like that. Daniel Day Lewis being Lincoln all the time. So, yeah, they the were re referred to it as like Lincoln on set, not yeah. Daniel Day Lewis right. on set. Um, living with Lincoln, Paul Spielberg, the cast and crew through shooting the film, from the battle at Jenkins Ferry, through the epic 13th Amendment showdown at the House of Representatives, to Lincoln's tragic end. Mm -hmm. So you get a lot of, you know, featurettes about the production, which is all well and good. Um, still, no audio commentary from Spielberg or Daniel Day-Lewis, which I think would be phenomenal to hear. I think that would be great. Or yeah. even Sally Field, or just yeah. well, anybody. There's yeah. so many people. Yeah. James Spader, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Tommy Lee Jones. Come on, guys. Yeah. Heck, Lee Pace. Pace. You could toss a Lee Pace and give him a commentary. That'd be a weird one since he's like <laughs> the one guy on the other side. So I don't know if that's the one you really want. <coughs> but, you know, at least you come in all the formats. And yeah. You, you've got some <clears throat> discussion about how they really spent a lot of time and energy making mm -hmm. this into a film. So, yeah. Bravo for that. Yeah, well done. Um, and again, another one from this year uh, that got some buzz, Killing Them Softly. Mm -hmm. This is a film based on Coogan's Trade uh, by George Higgins from 1974. Yeah. Action film starring, or action film, uh, thriller film yep. starring Brad, Brad Pitt, Pitt and Ray Liotta. One of the two movies from last year that had a movie poster that involved pointing a gun off poster that was positioned next to Lincoln and considered in various... Mm -hmm. That and Skyfall both had some e weird coincidental like Bond pointing a figure in, the, in Lincoln's head. Yeah. I feel like there's some uh, funny uh, theater... Uh, people <laughs> setting that, that stuff That one up. dude at like 3 in the morning who's like, Oh man, somebody's going to find this so funny. Probably. But you know... The, his name is <laughs> Dean. <laughs> the release has a Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy all in one, which is mm -hmm. all good. Sadly, really weak, weak, weak um, special features. Yeah. It has four deleted scenes that total 10 minutes. And a making of featurette which has six minutes of the cast and crew addressing the film's unique narrative. Rent it or look at the, <coughs> or just, you know, look at those on YouTube because you probably find them on YouTube. Seriously, yeah. It's like I mean, 10 minutes worth of special features. Come on, guys. If, if, Come you're, on, guys. if you really want to see this, just go to Scarecrow and rent it because yeah. it's not worth buying. Yeah. I mean, unless you're a really diehard fan of the film. Yeah. Which, yeah. Unless you will like, probably spend the same amount of time that it would take you to go <coughs> come to Scarecrow, find it, and leave that you would, you know... 
to watch the special features if you had bought it on your own. <laughs> yeah, unless you're like a relative of Andrew Dominic, I can't imagine you really wanting to spend the twenty or thirty dollars that's going to cost you to get this thing. Or if you're like a a pit completionist and you just own everything that he stars in. You have other but, problems if that's the case. Hey, hey, what's wrong with Brad Pitt? <laughs> He's a very sexy man. <laughs> not, not critiquing that at all. Um, one that you had brought up that mm -hmm. was worth mentioning is Veep, the yes. first season. And this is the Julio Louis Dreyfus comedy on mm -hmm. it HBO, HBO uh, with about, Tony Hale as well in it and yep. Matt Walsh or not? Yes, Ma no, Matt Walsh. Yes, Matt Walsh. Yes, Matt Walsh. <laughs> I always I get like, the UCB members mixed up yeah. that aren't Amy Poehler for some reason. Anna Chomsky mm -hmm. is on there. As My well. girl. My girl. Yeah. Freak me okay. out watching the whole first season, being like, I know that lady's face from somewhere, and then I look her up online, and I'm like, oh, it's My girl, and she looks exactly the same as an adult. Yeah, it's one of those people that pops up every now and then. You're yeah. like, oh, I remember her. Uh -huh. Veep is great. If you haven't checked it out, an incredibly funny story about, you know, a, obviously a vice president and mm. a vice president like many vice presidents who is there essentially as a figurehead, not really to yeah. do any actual work. Interestingly enough, one of the things that the creator of the show <laughs> instilled that they've kept going that I'm really excited to see the second season coming up soonish. Uh, is that the president himself is never mentioned by name or on screen at all. Like, he's a complete... There's constant. There's even a running joke in the series where the where um, the Veep, uh, Julia Lee Dreyfus' character, comes back to her office and says to her uh, secretary, any calls from the president? No? No. Like, it's always the president yeah. has never called her, and she's uh, never important. <coughs> and, to yeah. add uh, credence to that theory, same with the... Um, House of Cards. Mm -hmm. DP there has nothing to do. So exactly. Throw yep. on the campaign here. Yep. But you know, you got, let's see, deleted scenes and outtakes. So for a show like this, that seems very appropriate. Yes. You got making of Veep. Mm -hmm. You have a few, you know, fake PSA type things, which are pretty appropriate for yes. something like this. They did uh, a lot of parodies of actual <coughs> political gaffes using her as the subject. Yes. And recreating a lot of things like the phone calls from Hillary and a lot of various other humorous yeah. internet things. Um, plus you have 12 audio commentaries with Julie Louis, Dreyfus, Anna Chomsky, Tony Hale, etc, etc, awesome. etc. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. awesome. Now, I bet there's a lot of interesting weird stories about working on oh, that dude, show. I, I can only imagine I, yeah, it must be crazy. Wait. Yeah, can't wait for season two. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, finally this week we're going to end with the collector's edition of From Beyond. Mm. This is the follow-up to Reanimator by director Stuart Gordon and also, also starring, starring Jeffrey, Jeffrey Combs. Combs. Yep. Classic. Yep. Um, about scientists create a resonator to stimulate the pineal gland. Mm -hmm. Six cents. Yes. And open up a doorway to a parallel and hostile universe. Yeah, because it allows people to see <coughs> into this other universe and yeah. there's to be a reaction between it. Uh, Interestingly enough, the original H.P. Lovecraft story, which is, of course, no surprise, reanimator, same guy. Right. Uh, original story, seven pages long. Wow. That's it. Really uh, extrapolating based on that, for sure. Not, not really hard with an idea like that to extrapolate. Right. It's like every Philip K. Dick story. You, they, you get the base idea, you can sure. make a run plot it, and run yeah. with it. Uh, should note, this is coming from Scream Factory, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Shout Factory's yes. horror branch. Um, they're Love take, Shout Factory. They're taking over from the 2007... MGM release, so they've got everything from that Very release, cool. including the audio commentary with Stuart Gordon and the oh, cast. Nice. Uh, Lost and Found from the editing room, hmm. uh, discussing the restoration uh, with the restoration team at MGM and Stuart Gordon. Neat. Or, yeah. And uh, also you have new stuff, including an audio commentary with writer Dennis Paoli, hmm. uh, a look at the film's extensive makeup and creature effects with special effects creator John Butcher, Anthony Dublin, hmm. John Nowlin, and Mark Shostrom. And also stuff like uh, an interview, a new interview with Jeffrey Combs. It's like 15 Ooh, minutes long. Nice. So you got a whole bunch. You got a whole other hour stuff. worth of material added on to this release, add in addition to, your, to whatever was there before. Yeah. So. Add your growing Lovecraftian film collection. Yeah. Plus you get a Blu-ray DVD combo. So Shout Factory does it pretty well. So They're I, so good. Yeah. I mean, so. really, I wish people like Paramount would stop doing hundred-year releases and instead like actually, because look, it's like what 27 <coughs> years. It's not even like a, yeah. a. They just were like, you know what, we need to do we need to put out from beyond why because it's awesome because we can because we can and because yeah. we're chef factor. who doesn't like jeffrey combs and Stuart gordon who doesn't they like work well together exactly yeah who doesn't like that comb over that dude's got going mm. the crazy eyes yeah yeah 
Anyway, very good set, so pick that up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and next time, join us for our discussion of Dwayne Johnson in honor of G.I. Mm -hmm. Joe Retaliation. A.K.A. The <laughs> Rock. Can you smell what he's cooking? <laughs> no, and I can't do his eye the people's eyebrow either. I don't... Is it called the people's eyebrow? Yeah, the people's eyebrow. When he does this, that was what his move was called. Thing, his signature eyebrow. All right. That's a, in wrestling. Everything you do that wrestling. you do alone is a signature. You got like a signature crotch thrust. If you did it differently than everyone else, like maybe your package flopped out. Maybe at the you should end or work something. on that MacGuffin signature crotch thrust. Oh, I'm working on it. Oh, I'm working on it. Uh, <laughs> as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, mm -hmm. Twitter.com/slash/MacGuffinCast. Facebook.com slash MacGuffin Podcast. Phone number 323 761 9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv. We're on Miro. We're on Roku. Check in to get glue and get some stickers. Review us on iTunes. Find us on YouTube. Get we'll harassed by us yeah. on the social media. Harassed, that's a good word. Har harassed. Harassled. Yeah. <laughs> I just combined those two words. Yeah. I'm coining it. Yeah. MacGuffin term. Yeah. Harassled. <laughs> We're harassling you yeah. from here to eternity. <laughs> Get ready for some wrestling. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.